Hello, how are you going? I'm Ian Apples, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel. When I teach you how to paint in acrylic, and this is my free gift to you, I'll give you the size of my canvas, and I'll also get some colours running up the screen that I choose to use in this tutorial today. Now it is acrylic. We're going to have a bit of um, warmth, shadows, lights, and darks. A lot of things going on in this video for you to learn today. All right, so get on over here, and we'll get right into it. Okay, the top half will be the sky. My horizon line's here, and I've got this beautiful ocean rock piece onto the side, and it's gonna have a beautiful shadow in the splashing ocean water here. Got some foreground stones and rocks here, just to break it up as well. I have a bit of warmth in the sky, and try and get some moving clouds over here so we've got that perspective. Okay, down here I've got me white and some French ultramarine. I wanna get a little bit of that just to get a beautiful haze going here. And just on this part of my sky here, I wanna grab this here and just paint it in, get it on there, and just paint it to the horizon area there. All right. Okay, now with that paint, grab a lot more French ultramarine and we'll get this mixed up a bit darker, more blue, got more warmth in it there. And we'll come about this high here. I'm just crisscrossing it on. I've got nothing on this canvas. This is a prime canvas from the shop. Okay, get it over there somewhere. And I wanna soften those two colors together now while they're still a little bit wet. Crisscross it down, play with this, have fun with your work. Concentrate now on getting the transition a lot nicer there. I'm happy with that. Okay, now we've got that. I'll add a bit more French into there and some phalo blue. This will change the blue value of it. I want a bit more white in there. It's a little bit heavy. And I want to get the top coming across, get some more. I'm only using a one inch flat brush here to get this on. It's only because I've only got a half size canvas that I normally use. Normally I use an A3 size. This is an A4 size, the size of an office piece of paper. Okay, I've got it where they join. Now, get this nice there. And now I just want to crisscross them and merge those together. Now if you're doing this on a big canvas it might pay to use a bit of a retarder to keep your paints wet longer but I'm just using a small canvas so hence I'm not using any retarder. Now I do have some white out of the tube it's a lot thicker than that white I just want some subtle clouds creating some movement in my sky and my rocks here so I might have something just floating here like so. Nothing too big if I can help but not get carried away. There we go. I'll grab a blending brush and I want to just kind of sit that in the sky with no hard edges on it, just soft cirrus cloud up in the sky there. Twisting it into that blue. The blue's quite firm. So I'm rubbing it a bit harder than normal because there's no retarder in this. Normally some veteran viewers of mine will see me use retarder. And I want to try and get that movement in there. There we go, I'm happy with that. From here, that'll do. And soften that down as well. Just getting rid of the hard edges. I might try and get something across there, just like that. Now I'm just crisscrossing it into that blue. Grabbing a little bit more, and maybe this is a bigger cloud. I'm just gonna put a bit of something there like my yumminess so I can just keep the vibrancy of it there and soften it down into that body of cloud there, the bottom edge of it there. Just something like that, I suppose. bit more here. Just 
just leaving the top there and leaving some, some of the harshness there. Now I've given this horizon area a bit of a dry and I just want to put my mask and tape where my ocean's going to be. My ocean's going to be, if you, to make it so simple, I want the height of the ocean there. So I'll put that there and I'll just grab another bit of tape and sink to the bottom of that. Now you can do it in one go. I'm just doing it here for those people who really have trouble getting positioning right. Now I'm going to push that right against that paint there. And now we want to block in the water. Being darker out here and a bit lighter as it comes forward. Now I've got my French over here. And I want to get some phalo into that as well. And I don't need to come anywhere past that point. So I want to get this right against the horizon layer. Nice and dark. Get a bit more French in there, there we go. And just water fight across the canvas there. Now what I'm gonna do is simply come a bit lighter. So I'm gonna grab the white now, put in there. A bit more phalo, just to get it a, a lighter value of what's there. And I wanna come from about here. There we go, that'll do. I'm gonna to have to come back later and scratch in some darker color there. See how it's not working? I'll do that later. And now we've got the cadmium yellow light. It's gonna give us a turquoisey color here. Get enough of that in there. Now the rest of this paint we wanna get, I wanna merge it into that blue first. I'll get this transition the gradient of those two nice there we go that's fine that's good enough and then quickly just block in the rest of your water where it's going to go block it in with your brush you use and don't confuse yourself and get too many brushes on the go just anything can be an applicator to get your paint onto your canvas anything so there we go i'll just Stroke that now, get it nice. So what I've gone and done, I've got some more French ultramarine here, just on its own. I'm gonna stamp it on right against the edge there, not too low down, I've got too much on my brush there. Stamp it on against there. That'll do. I'm gonna just wipe the bulk off that brush and I wanna gently waterfy that That'll do it. See that sky color underneath is pulling through, but I'm stuck with that now. So when it dries, I can darken that up. Okay, now I might want to get a little bit shallow water here before it hits the rocks. And I'm just going to grab the cadmium yellow light with this here and get some of that a lot lighter in with the yellow. There is going to be quite a bit of um, white foam on this so this will just sort of tassel in here getting this vibe of shallowness there and then stroke that through now i've got some prussian blue here i'm going to get that with the french ultramarine i've given the canvas a bit of a dry along here not too crazy but enough just so it's not going to pull that white through and i want to just get this darker vibe in the water now there we go just across that tape there i'll wipe what paints on the brush just so as i can merge it now i've got to get the french on my brush just so as i can merge it with that there and then i'll taper it down i'll get a little bit of water on my brush not too much So as I can get this, get a bit of white with that in my brush. There we go. Picking up some of the French again. There we go. I've had to really muck around to get my dark band back. Okay. 
I'll take that tape off the canvas there. And we've got a nice dark horizon line way, way out there. Hey, now that Prussian blue, I'm grabbing some of this leftover yellow, cadmium yellow light, just so as I can get a darker version of a turquoise out there, a darker band I want in there, something like that. And I'm feeling somewhere around here, I want a bit of the water just cupping up. So as I do that, I need where I want that wave to cup up like that. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, this is a bit dark. So I'll make the band of it here. This is the band of it. Now you watch how easy it is to make some kind of beautiful realistic wave. Something like that coming along, can fade away. Now I'm, I'm dancing the bottom so it can kind of, my rock's going to be there somewhere. Just softening the bottom up now. There we go, that's all we needed, a nice dark band there. And that's the Prussian blue with the yellow, cadmium yellow light. I didn't use cadmium yellow medium, I used light because it's a cool colour. Okay, I'm going to wet my brush that I'm going to use and just dab it dry in a rag, squeeze it dry. Now this thick paint here, I want to pick some of this up. And I want to get some of the sky colour in there. So let's say some of this vibe here with the French. Some of this in your white, so it's not pure white, it's this. And what I want to do just before this wave, I want to get some bits and bobs of white wash scratching around out there uh, from about here down so i'm let's show i'm, I'm doing like a, a slight smiley face getting some of this roughly to where i want it Bits and bobs. Now that wave that we put in there, that dark bit, let's get some of this and put on top of that. Get the little bits behind there. Coming along. Now what I want is a bit of diamond, like crisscrossing, nothing too exact but you're kind of distorting those lines okay i'm still trying to get some bits just a bit more darker and wishy-washy but not losing too much of that color within it i will pick up my liner brush as well into that same color just so as we can concentrate on some of this wave here i want See the lines, I'm going to show you some thin lines. I'll get across the top first, just dance across the top. You want it the right inky consistency. And in front of this, we want to what I'm doing is kind of like X eights, crosses, sort of like that kind of thing. Nice and thin coming within that dark bit, washing over here, so it looks like it's tapering down. I need more water on my brush. If it's not the right inkiness, it's not gonna work properly and you're gonna get disappointed with yourself, so do Try and remember to keep it at the right consistency. I'll start off the there. I want some of the veins, so I'll, I'll come like this way. And then we'll try and get some coming across. Nice and thin x strokey coming up. And distort them. Don't have them like um, a, a full row of X's within your wave. You'll Start making it look a bit weird. 
This is all the underpainting for the wave. It's only a slight wave, but it has a lot of detail within it. I want some of this pushing up now in front of that. Because believe it or not, a lot of this is going to be whitewash. It's, we've just got the watercolour there to underpaint it. Let me have a look here. I just need to keep looking in my monitor to see I'm getting the right vibe that I'm after. And this is just simply a bit of white and the French ultramarine here. If it's pure white, it would be very loud and, I don't know, not quite the way it should be looking. And all these little lines that I'm putting in, they're all going to make sense. We need some, where are we, feathering off some of this thicker stuff. Get your paint very inky, but not inky where you can see right through it. So what I want to do now is start getting this. See how light this is? I've got to start from here. It's going to be pretty much a lot of whitewash. So I've got to start getting it tapering from heavy to that. So what I'm doing now is using this flat brush, coming sort of to it, doing those same this way, that way kind of vibe, getting to it, getting to it. I'll stop there because I've got like this section done. Now I've done that section, now I'm doing this section that's a lot more heavier. So we're going to Get some that way as well. Not too distinctive though, just lace it in there. And now down here, we're gonna really start getting it a lot more thicker. Where are we? I'll... So leave bits of that green there, probably 12% of it. We've got a, a different vibe now with this. Keep your brush loaded. This now is different to this here. You see what I mean? This is just my way of making some beautiful, realistic frothiness. Take your time, there's no rush, and you can do this. So this white here is just simply the French ultramarine and white. So we've got like a light purpley color. When we put the white on there, the pure white, this color that I'm putting on now would act as a depth color and it would start giving the shape. This is still blocking in, so it's gonna look a bit weird. The first coverage of your brush strokes aren't gonna create the picture, you gotta build it up, and that's what I'm doing now. Take your time, have a cup of tea, go and have a vanilla slice, a rest, sit in the garden for 10 minutes and analyze your work. Now I've got the free flow white here. It's not the craft paint, it's the, just use your normal paint if you can't find this one, your normal white, and, and thin it down a bit. I wanna get this white, and let's say, a bit of the French over here, it's too much. Just to taint it, I love. I don't like to give it the pure white until I feel it can have the very pure white at the very end. So there you can see the white and it's tainted. And this against what we just done is gonna look a lot whiter. So out here, I wanna try and get some, where are we? more condensed white. Use what brush is gonna work for you. I'm just using this because it's what I've got in my hand. And then as you're putting this on, leave some of that first white within it so it's creating the depth values and the shadows within that highlighted paint. Let me have a look in there. I might come across here. And like I said, the pure white on top of this will help us sit this deck. That's looking agitated. Now the top of that wave, see the top of that wave we got there? I wanna get that. Just getting a bit brighter. I'm kind of flicking it up. So this line will stand out from what I've just done behind it, okay? It's just getting rustled and wind hit and creating that white frothy foam. And 
Now this can be a lot thicker here, it's relaxed here. Get some of this. Okay, now we want to get mainly the very, just bits of this now creeping up in front of that wave, just bits here and there, nothing too dramatic. I'm going to do a bit and keep looking in my monitor there. So here I've got a nice, just kind of coming up and down. So it's pushing the wave back. So it's gone down there and then coming around. It's creating that illusion. Let's say tracing into that bit there. I'm trying to give it dimension so it doesn't always look flat. And we're just slowly highlighting this. This looked white, but this one's making it look like a different colour now. And all this agitation is just looking rough, washed, hit by wind. Now I've, I've done to there, I'm grabbing this brush again so I can detail this bit here. See, you get the underlying colours down, like the water colours and the darkness of the white colours. We've laid it in and now we're using this to bring all the detail. Let it scratch, let it be open. I like to stop every now and then and look in my monitor just so I can see it's like squinting my eyes. I've said it many a times and I'll always keep saying it. It's a great way to analyse your work. Look in the camera there and see what's happening. And this is just thicker turmoil and whitewash, getting lot washed around like it's in a washing machine. It's just so much agitation there where it's hitting these rocks when we get these forward rocks in. And you'll see that this colour here, that purpley, French ultramarine viber white, leaving that there is creating the depth. And when I put pure white on top of this, it's just going to look so great. See, if I had this colour, the pure white, it's going to lock it and stop it from being more detailed. Do it very lightly and then slowly add the pressure to your brush onto the canvas. If you just go like that, you're going to make snot. You don't want to create snot, you want to create absolute bullshit when you're painting a canvas. And that bullshit is just beautiful bullshitting details that look great to make people go, bullshit, did you do that? They just can't believe it. Get some of this right down there. Okay, ready to go to the next section. Now, you've seen how I did that. If you just came along as a beginner and saw that, you're going to go, oh my God, I can't do that. But now knowing how to do it, you can do it with practice. Now, before I put the final detail on top of that water, I'll get this side ocean rock in and that way all that detail can be splashed over in front of it and then we can create the shadow from the rock just casting onto the water. All right I've got my flat brush I'm going to use this to create my rock and I've got some dioxine purple and yellow ochre so I want to grab some of this dioxine and start mixing my rock colour. Slowly add the dark colour to the lighter colour. Now when you do a rock in acrylic, I find doing each layer, dry it after every layer so the other colours are going to stick out on top. I'll just get the edge done first, covering my sky. Now to me these rocks on the beach are all jagged and all over the place. Now I've got to make sure I want to come down about here. So I'll just give myself a bit of a edge where I want to come. There we go. And I'll block that in, <coughs> covering up the unpainted areas of the sky so I can take advantage of that to create the shape. There we go. Coming down here. All right, now I'll just block all this in.
bit where it's hitting the water is just kind of scatter it into there a bit like this. Where are we? And around here, just scatter it so it's where the whitewash is going to be splashing up against it. You will see bits of the white, I mean bits of the rock colour there. If you do see that. <clears throat> there we go. Let's dry that. Okay, I'll pull some of this. I want the dioxine purple. So it's very, very dark instead of you. I don't want to use black. And now my brush is loaded nice and neat. I can control how I want the darks. So we've blocked in our rock. We've simply blocked it in. Let's say it's a mid-tone. I want some nice dark vibes now. Let's, now if it's, this isn't dark enough, we can simply make it dark. So I'm going to... I'll do a bit first just to see how it looks in me. I can go a little bit darker. So I'm just pulling more of the dioxine purple in there. And if your dioxine is really low pigmented and it's looking very light still, just put a touch of black into it, okay? But anyway, I want some just like that. Bits of rock jutting here and there. Where's our edge? We could probably have a nice, let's say this ledge here. Something dark coming in. We're going to start creating the 3D vibe of this rock. Juddery bits here, nothing too much. All this will be sunken back with the mid-tones and highlights and stuff. I like to scratch it too. Get it real scratchy as you do it. Have a nice shadowy face of it here somewhere still in the same theme of scallops and lines and scratchy bits. Just a way to create a beautiful rock in acrylic paint. Some of this edge you want dark and pull it in a bit. You don't want the edges light and bright. You don't want them too much with a line on there as well. And you just want bits you can think back this is just that dioxine purple now i've grabbed this color was in my brush i put it here and i put the gray in there now i'm grabbing this color as well just to get rid of that purpley color just now i want to get this shadow let's say from about here coming out there and it's important to get this shadow to follow the shape of the water. Okay, so I'm kind of going up and down. It's going to come from this side of the rock. I'm just getting my points first. It's going to come down, up, and let's say here. Okay. All right, so I've got my French Ultramarine. I've got a little bit of this mixture. I forget what it was now, mixed with it. I've dried the painting. So, because that shadow, it went a bit <coughs> too light color for my liking. So I'm going to stamp this vibe in there. Get the edge the way I want it. And then I'll just gingerly block that in as well. Have a look in my monitor to see how that one's looking. <clears throat> and that's looking a bit more like a shadow. Just getting the corner right so it doesn't look like it's tucked in and cut off. So I'll bring this towards that lump a bit more. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. We can keep going to the cows come home, but that'll do for our shadow. All right, now grabbing this color that we mixed our rock in, we painted our rock. I want to grab some cadmium yellow medium now. 
and mix up some of this. Get a bit of cadmium, I mean yellow ochre into the mix. Let's go from about here. I'm scratching it in. I'm not doing big, thick. Um, brush strokes because we've got our shadow down here <clears throat> I want to create if anything some kind of light hitting that top corner <clears throat> now leaving all those darks in there we're just going to gingerly, how's that looking, reasonable, now that'll do there, I want this bottom bit a bit darker, I'll simply grab a bit of black into that, and let's see how this colour's looking, I'll, I want to put a bit on and I'll look in my viewfinder, but I'm just jostling around here, I'm not doing nothing scientific, I mean I'm not doing nothing overly technical. That colour's okay, I want it a little bit more darker so I'm just adding some more black to the mix. And let's have a look now, because we're going to have a lot of whitewash coming up against this part of the rock. I mean, it's not the best rock, but it's going to look oceany, I hope. Now, I'm going to, I've just noticed in my viewfinder, I've got to sit a lot of this purple back with this darker vibe, just because it's looking a bit iffity affity, in my opinion. Now, that colour that I got there, I'll just grab some burnt umber and whack in it, just to get a different value darker value, deeper value. Maybe a little bit of black into that. Getting it dark down there where that whitewash is going to hit against it. It's got a green vibe to it because of the yellow that went in there. And a black, black and yellow creates a green vibe. That's okay though, we're getting a bit of darkness. Bits here with more dark in them, coming from that purpley dark. I'll put the light back up there later because I've lost some of it playing backwards and forwards, getting the gradients of these tones and highlights and shadows where I want them. Now we'll just get the light hitting it. So I'll grab some of this again with the cadmium yellow medium, or even with the yellow ochre as well. And just up here, let's have a look. It's a lot lighter. Nice, let me have a look there, beautiful. Dry each layer as you do it. I didn't dry my other colour, so I might get some mudding up happening. I'll see how we go. We're getting some light hitting all that, which is good. Come off the painting and into it. Where's that colour? I might get a little bit just getting refracted down here somewhere. Somewhere there. Somewhere here. Not too much, just the littlest bits. Let's have a look at that. Yep, so that's looking all right. Where else are we? Trying to get some of this a lot more sharper where it's more of a harder edge of the rock. Looking good, looking good. See, I can feel we can have a little bit of light down here somewhere. Just a bit. Now I'm going to grab some of the white 
and put in that colour, the free flow white. Get it a lot brighter, a lot brighter. Little bits now, little bits now. Very, very little bits. See how much I'm putting on there? Bugger all. Just enough. See all this bit here needs a bit of something on there. That'll do. You said that'll do and you're still going. I know, it's hard to stop, but there we go. Grab yourself a, a, a wet script liner and the black. Curl it up nice and sharp and a good thing to do with rocks. Get some, I call these veins, nice skinny bits just coming across. Wiggly, find the dark spit, spot, take advantage of it. And then you also come down You can come straight through the right part of the light bit as well. And you're pretty much making cracks and splits and depth and all sorts. On. And get some splits in that rock. These are very fine so the camera might pick up some of it or it might not. I'm not sure. I did this in another painting showing you how you can just add beautiful, simple, effective crack splits and detail within rocks. After you've done them, you just wiggle over it with a script liner like this and create just that final detail. Now we can keep coming on with that till the cows come home. We've got our nice warmth in our sky. We've got distance, we've got atmosphere, we've got pollution way back there. We've got distance. Now before we put this foreground in, I just want to get this detail with the white because it's way back from our rocks. They're not right at it, they're down and back a bit. That's the vibe we're going for. Now I'm going to use a couple of brushes. I'm going to use a deer foot. I have this one and a bigger one and I've got my liner, script liner. And why I want to use the deer foot is because it can create dots like that. So like this wave, I want to get bits of white in here now, pure white, pure white. Lacing along that line there. Some of this, just some of it, can be highlighted. Just get my camera focused. I don't think the focus was on there too well. I had the focus spot turned on. Now this is where I'm going to start creating the detail over this other white that wasn't pure white. You'll be able to see just how this it's going to come into play and this you, you can also use this to sharpen up your detailed edge of your shadow which is there now i'm going to use my deer foot same paint i want to try and get the illusion of this water let's get just some out here first so I'm going to turn it around so I don't get a, an even pattern. And I can create blurry bits of this as well where it's a lot thicker. Leaving that first colour that we did put there. Don't destroy too much of that. Now this rock. This is, that's why I kept that dark. This is going to have the water. Try and get the ends, ends open, not like the shape of the brush, if you can help it. And that bits of brown that you see within the bottom part is just showing 
the depth. I do have a, another deer foot as well. I'm going to grab that because I just looked in my monitor and I can kind of see bits of um, patterns happening that I'm not too happy with. So let's, this one's a bit bigger. But I want to try and make them as dots, not lines. Now obviously this bit here is a lot higher. There we go, we're winning. And then we've got more right here. Fluffing around. I wouldn't have been able, I want to do a live painting, but I've got to find the right subject and time because I don't like to do me live tutorials over an hour so I like to do something I can do within an hour this I could paint this in an hour but to film and paint it's a different story I've been going for an hour and a half since I've turned the camera on after setting up it's taken me an hour and a half of time so far to get where I am with this now I'm making more heavy brighter wider turmoil here Now what I will do is I'll grab my script liner and now we want the actual droplets, the big droplets, but not too big, please don't go too big and feather them down within this wash here just so they blend in. Not too big. All right, now I'm gonna grab the black and burnt umber, just to get pretty much black, but it's got the brown vibe in there. Take some of that as well if we want, use up some of these darker colors here, because I simply wanna map in the dark rocks and then gingerly start to highlight them. And I'm gonna do it a real simple way that a beginner can do it with their eyes shut, so to speak, but you still need to paint you still need to practice if you want to paint with your eyes shut, all right? And I want to come about there. I'm, I'm trying to work out where I want these rocks, but I want the edges of it sharp, sharp, sharp. Just rolling the brush. So if we did this and then tried to paint in all that whitewash, we're going to be working back to front and it'll, you're trying to paint around stuff. So I'm just getting, because these are like round stones. Round stones. Okay, done the top. Brush it in. Very simple. And then give this a dry. Okay, now I'm grabbing grey and I'm going to start adding that into the gray just to get a lighter value, a shadowy value. I want it a bit darker than that. You don't want to go too bright straight away. I should have, could have used this brush to mix it because that's the mixing brush. There we go. So you can see from this color, it's gone from that color to this color. So I've given this a dry and I want to come from the top, just something like that getting the very top line, dark line covered up. You can probably even leave a full dark one there and come over. Okay, done that. Now we're gonna slowly create these into more rocks here. I wanna just like this, just like that. Now work out, I might want a, another one right in the front here. Somewhere right up here. Pushing all that, that'll do, something there. Got this one here. 
There we go. Now grab just what's in your brush and the rest of that grey. And we're going to use this to highlight it. Now, so that was such a simple rock to colour in and paint. And now we'll just start creating the light hitting these rocks. Don't think about it too much, just kind of get them in there. Now this big one here, I didn't dry it, so look, that's a bit, that's mudding up a bit, but I could dry that later. Bits of light out here. I'll get this one pushed right forward. And we'll try and get a bit more, get this wet one done. Now we'll simply highlight these, but instead of putting white on there, we'll get the sky colour. And so it looks like there's wet water on it. We'll, we'll paint the wet water on it, the sky colour. So I've got some of the French and white. Now I do have a little bit of phalo there. Let's just see what that's going to do. And this can simply be just the highlights, but with the water over our rocks. So I want to get it hairy, not solid. I'm going to have to do a bit just to see how it's going to look. Hopefully I can get that glassy wet look within the rocks. I'll get a bit done. That's okay. I need the top of this a bit wet. And just here and there wet some of these stones with the sky colour in the white. Because you've got to remember, let's say wet, wet sand, wet water, it's reflecting, that's more than likely the sky colours. Now I'm just going to try it like I did with the rock, I mean the water. Let's just say we'll get some droplets on there. Now I've gone and watered it too much, it's too see-through so I'll make it darker. Work out which bits you want water on, like droplets. Don't go too mad putting droplets everywhere. And what I want to do is try and work out, alright I'll have a, a pool of water. very thin like I'm just finishing off, look, I'm backwards and forwards from my monitor, looking where I feel I can use some real positive glare within my rocks here. I've done all my veins, dribble runs everywhere, all these lines there, they're looking good. And just bits where I feel a lot of glare is being hit. I'm just going to sign this one and I'll pull the tape off it. 
And I want to thank my patrons who support my content every month. The link's in the description below if you want to be a patron. And I also want to thank my YouTube members who support my channel every month. Just hit the Join tab if you want to become a YouTube channel member. And now we'll pull the tape off and see how that looks. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a nice coastal ocean hitting water scene. We've got the light, the warmth, the distance, the shadows, and I know you can do it. Well, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, and the proof is in the pudding there. It looks great, and if you think it looks great, you tell your friends, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.